Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A minivan from Kia, the Carnival 2.2 SX AT, and a subcompact sedan from Toyota, the Vios URS. Plus, they featured a feature comparison of two mid-sized SUVs, the Isuzu Mu XLS E 4x4 AT versus Mitsubishi Montero Sport GT 4x4. On Autopedia, we'll talk about checking an engine light, and together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the launch of Toyota's new Velos as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus, and we'll be right back after this short break. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes. To race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition. So you too can race yours. Suzuki El Tiga. Seven-seater in style. Kailangan ng maaasahan, kailangan ng matibay Pang matagalan, kasama mo sa pag-unlad ng negosyo Modernong disenyo, kaya-kaya ang cargo mo Nang tatak na ito Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up on yung negosyo Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Kia. Is it a minivan or an SUV? This car review takes a look at the all-new Kia Carnival 2.2XX 7-seater AT. When Kia launched the all-new Carnival locally, it described it as a grand utility vehicle with a design that, in its own word, is SUV-inspired. While Kia wanted the new Carnival to come across as an SUV, it wanted the fourth-generation Carnival to maintain all the space, comfort, and conveniences of a premium multi-purpose van. To some extent, Kia has succeeded as the all-new Carnival exterior exudes an SUV flair, while its dimensions, 5,155mm long, 1,995mm wide, and 1,740mm tall, with a 3,090mm long wheelbase and 172mm ground clearance, allows it to provide all the interior space and comfort of a luxurious MPV. Kia brought in two variants of the all-new Carnival, the 2.2 EX 7-seater AT and the 2.2 SX 7-seater AT. Both look strong, modern, and classic at the same time, a look that should stand the test of time. A distinctive feature is what Kia calls the island roof design that makes it seem the top of the Carnival is held up by the C pillar. The top-of-the-line Carnival 2.2 SX comes with the dual LED projection type headlamps, dual sunroof, satin chrome silver radiator grille, and 19-inch alloy wheels wrapped by 235-55R19 tires. VX comes sans their sunroof but with LED headlamps, silver radiator grille, and 18-inch alloy wheels wrapped by 235-55R18 tires. Both SX and EX share LED daytime running lights and fog lamps, body color front and rear bumpers, door handles and rear view mirrors that fold and adjust electronically, as well as feature LED turn indicators. Accentuating the SUV-inspired new look are the front and rear skid plates as well as the rear spoiler. Also shared by both Carnival variants are power sliding doors and tailgate, 
LED high mount stop light and rear combination lamps, standard rear fog lamp, pole type antenna, rear window defogger, and belt line molding. Kia made it a point to retain all the things that owners like in these three past generations of the Carnival, the roominess and comfort of a well-appointed cabin while adding even more of the smart connectivity and modern convenience features that make Kia's flagship MPV even more comfortable and safe to drive and ride in. Both variants got smart keyless entry and push button as well as remote start as standard along central door locks with auto locking function, power windows with auto up down safety function, and front and rear three zone air conditioning system. The dash looks especially elegant and premium accentuated by the metallic trim that matches the inner door handles. The SX gets real premium leather for the seats while the EX makes do with leatherette upholstery. The driver's seat on the SX can be power adjusted 8 ways, plus 4 ways for the lumbar support and comes in memory as well as cooling function. The front passenger seat adjusts electronically 8 ways but also comes with a cooling function. There's an armrest between the front seats that doubles as a storage box. The second row seats truly pamper passengers in the SX. Kia calls them relaxation seats and they recline electronically and come with armrest, cushion, and legrest and can be adjusted back and front as well as side to side. The seats are cool too, figuratively and literally. The second row seats in the EX are also quite comfortable, captain's chairs with armrests that can recline and slide lengthwise and sidewise manually. The third row seat in both SX and EX recline and fold 60-40. The compartment for luggage at the back has a 627 liter capacity that can be increased to 2,785 liters by adjusting and folding the second row and third row seats. The SX gets more of the premium items including LED map and room lamps, but the EX shares much of what comes standard on the SX. This includes leather wrapped four spoke steering wheel that tilts and telescopes, and features controls for audio, Bluetooth, and multifunction display, cruise control, and lane keeping assist. Also wrapped in leather is the gear shift knob. The new Carnival is also equipped with electronic parking brake with auto hold, illuminated glove box, scuff plates, a multitude of cup holders and beverage holders. Families into gadgets will like what the Carnival comes with front USB connectivity port as well as charging ports available to passengers in the second and third row seats. It may not be the largest now available, but the 8-inch touchscreen display is more than adequate for an infotainment system with AM FM radio, MP3 player, Bluetooth, hands-free with voice control function, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android that plays through 4 speakers plus 2 tweeters. The Carnival has a reputation for being a smooth ride. It was designed to be an ideal, reliable, and comfortable MPV after all. This is carried over into the 4th generation Carnival. It has all the power it needs from the SmartStream 2.2 inline 4-cylinder diesel engine and common rail direct injection and variable geometry turbocharger that generates 202 PS and 440 Nm of torque. All this power and torque is sent smoothly to the front wheels by a SmartStream 8-speed automatic transmission. And with diesel prices being what they are now, it should be a comfort to know you have 4 driving modes to choose from. Normal, Eco, Sport, and Smart to cope with all kinds of traffic and road conditions. And to have confidence that when you want to enjoy yourselves on the drive, you can with confidence. The long wheelbase, front wheel drive, and motor-driven power steering along with the suspension system that is both firm and supple makes the all-new Carnival a smooth drive and ride. The suspension features front McPherson strut and stabilizer and multi-link system in the rear providing predictable stopping powers and brake system using front and rear discs. The Carnival 2.2 SX gets more of the driver assist technologies like blind spot detection with collision avoidance assist, forward collision avoidance assist, rear cross traffic alert, camera display with dynamic guidelines, and parking distance warning with front and rear sensors. Both SX and EX are also equipped with anti-lock brake system, electronic stability control, multi-collision brake system, hill start assist control, and trailer stability assist. Overall, the Kia has done enough with the new Carnival to justify coming up with a category or tag, Grand Utility Vehicle. The latest auto industry news and developments, right after this break. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours.
Welcome back to Autofocus. We now have the latest auto industry news. The public got to see and learn how Mitsubishi cars can enhance their lives at the Life Caravan held from June 16 to 19 at the Glorieta Activity Center in Makati. The Life Caravan at Glorieta is the first of a series of roadshows Mitsubishi Motors Philippines is staging to showcase its vehicle lineup and to experience life made better, the brand's PH slogan. According to MMPC President Takeshi Hara, the slogan Life Made Better echoes Mitsubishi Motors' commitment to add value and further enrich lives of Filipinos. Caravan is the home go for a caravan and signifies Mitsubishi's commitment to reach customers in all parts of the country. Simply, first of all, in the center of the Glorietta, our barred customer and uh, non Mitsubishi customer also uh, could see the, um, our vehicle. And uh, vehicle and uh, great uh, display and uh, how to use our vehicle for your great car ride. And uh, that is the most important uh, message from Mitsubishi. Uh, we have uh, displayed our all model lineup and uh, some L300, Strada, and the Montero, our flagship, and uh, G4 is down. But especially for the new expander, we have just launched the new MPB, uh, number one model of small MPB. If you haven't been to the first stop of the Life Caravan, then keep a watch on for when and where the second stop is happening. Auto Hub and SM celebrated not just Father's Day but Father's Week with a week-long motorcycle and auto festival at SM Mega Mall's Mega Fashion Hall. Auto Hub, the country's number one multi-brand dealership network in SM Mega Mall, partnered to stage Dad's Mega Ride. Over the seven days leading to Father's Day, Dad's Mega Ride showcased products and special promo offerings from Auto Hub's premier roster brands: Rolls Royce, Shelby, Mini, Triumph Motorcycles, Vespa, Aprilia Scooters, Suzuki, Mitsubishi, Nissan, and Paint Hub. So actually, the good thing is. We have different programs for every model that we have and, and uh, I hope that the customers are going to be happy, especially now na the supply is in shortage. No? Demand is quite high because after two years of pandemic, ngayon lang bumibili ng kotse yung mga customers. No? So for Father's Day, we give these special programs also for fathers. Kia Philippines showcases K2500, a light-duty truck, at the Manila Foods and Beverages Expo, held from June 15 to 19, 2022. Kia's participation at the MAFBEX is part of the Kia K2500 Cargado Caravan 2022 to promote this versatile lineup of light commercial vehicles. Various configurations of the K2500 were showcased at MAFBEX. These included the K2500 Cargo that Kia says is aimed at caterers, the K2500 refrigerated van for perishable cargoes, and the K2500 4x4 double cab drop site for agricultural goods suppliers. The K2500 and shuttle service guys was also made available for test drives on site. He also arranged to have a BPI representative at its booth to facilitate easy and convenient transactions for financing. Isuzu Philippines is celebrating another milestone after the Travis light truck reached the 10,000th sales mark. Launched towards the end of 2019, the Isuzu Travis quickly became a popular choice for business owners nationwide. The 10,000 Travis customer, Microserver 8 Enterprises, was feted by Isuzu Philippines, led by its president, Noboru Murakami, during a ceremonial turnover. According to Sherime Pag-ong, purchasing head of Microserver 8 Enterprises, they have been using the Travis since 2021 and have been receiving very good feedback from drivers nationwide. The Travis is truly one of the best profit partners, she said. To celebrate the milestone, they launched a series of promotions for existing and potential Travis customers. Until August 31, IPC will be giving away 10,000 liters worth of fuel in a raffle to the first 500 customers nationwide who will purchase or reserve a Travis unit. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. All new 
Isuzu US. Take the lead. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and featured electronic magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on Head to Head. Buyers are spoiled for choice in the mid-sized SUV segment. This head-to-head -head pits the Isuzu Mi UX LSE 4x4 Automatic against the Mitsubishi Montero Sport GT 4x4. While design and styling as well as brand image remain huge factors to people looking to buy vehicles, more and more automotive and smart technology for performance, comfort, convenience and safety determine choice. Buyers are now closely looking at spec sheets and narrowing down choices before test drives lock down decisions. Let's compare two mid-sized SUVs that easily come to mind for those looking for options that offer 4x4 capability as well as 7-seat capacity. The Isuzu Mu X LSE 4x4 AT and the Mitsubishi Montero Sport GT 4x4. The latest Isuzu Mu X LSE 4x4 automatic is 4,850mm long, 1,870mm wide and 1,825mm tall with a 235mm ground clearance and 2,855mm long wheelbase. The Montero Sport GT 4x4 is 4,825mm long, 1,850mm wide and 1,835mm tall with a 218mm minimum ground clearance. The Mu X LSE exterior features a thick lube grille in tungsten silver and chrome. Auto leveling arrow signature by LED headlamps framed by daylight running lights and front LED fog lamps. A rear spoiler winglet signature rear combination lights, LED fog lamp and high mount stop lamp. It also comes with body color door handles, body color side view mirrors with integrated side turn lamp and power adjust and fold function, roof rails with 100 kg load capacity, side step board, a power tailgate, rain sensing wipers and 20 inch aluminum alloy wheels with machine cut finish wrapped by 26550R20 tires. The Montero Sport GT exterior features the dynamic shield fascia, large combination turn signals and fog lamps. LED rear combination lamp and 18-inch two-tone six-spoke alloy wheels. A new power tailgate can be opened or closed using foot movement in front of the sensors. The tailgate opening height can also be set to memory. The new XLS E 4x4 automatic comes with remote car lock and engine start system, along with push start stop engine function and power tailgate. The interior features leather upholstery for seats and trim. The driver's seat power adjusts eight ways. The front passenger seat manually adjusts four ways. The second row seats for three splits and fold 60-40 and comes with fold down center armrest and three adjustable headrests. The third row seat for two splits and folds 50-50 and also comes with adjustable headrests. The second and third row seats fold to make room for more luggage and other cargo. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes and features controls your audio, phone, and voice control. Electroluminescent type meters plus a 4.2-inch multi-information display highlight the modern MUX dash. The MUX also comes with power door locks and windows. Dual zone climate control system with pollen air filter and vents for rear passengers, 12 volt and 220 volt accessory outlet and USB charging port. The Montero Sport GT four wheel drive comes with a smart keyless entry system with start stop engine button, an 8 inch full LCD instrument cluster, dual zone automatic climate control system, and adaptive cruise control. The roomy cabin houses three rows of seats upholstered in leather. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes and comes with paddle shifters and controls for the instrument cluster and entertainment system. Adding to convenience are USB ports, a 12-volt socket, and 220-volt power outlet. The new XLSE infotainment system features a 10-inch touchscreen display unit with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth connectivity, auxiliary in, USB port, navigation, and an 8-speaker system. The Montero Sport GT features a multimedia entertainment system with 8-inch display, Apple CarPlay, and Android Audio compatibility. The new XLS E4x4 automatic is powered by Isuzu's 4JJ3 TCX, a 2,999cc diesel engine with electronic VGS turbocharger, intercooler, and common rail direct injection that generates 190 PS and 450 Nm of torque. The engine is mated to a 6-speed automatic transmission with sequential shift. It comes with a 4-wheel drive drivetrain with shift on-the-fly function, terrain command select dial, and rough terrain mode switch. 
the all-new MUX suspension features double wishbones with coil spring, high-mounted upper control arm and stabilizer in front, and five-link suspension with coil spring and stabilizer bar in the rear. The brake system uses ventilated discs on all four wheels. The Montero Sport GT four-wheel drive is powered by a 2.4-liter inline four-cylinder MIVEC diesel engine with variable geometry turbo generating 181 PS at 3,500 revolutions per minute, a 430 Nm of torque at 2,500 RPM. This is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission with sport mode. It comes with Super Select four-wheel drive 2 with off-road traction control that can be shifted from 2H to 4H, 4HLC, and 4LLC. The suspension system uses a double wishbone with coil springs and stabilizer bar in front and three-link coil springs with stabilizer bar in the rear. The all-new Mu X is fitted with Isuzu's Advanced Driver Assist System or ADAS that features forward collision warning, autonomous emergency brake, turn assist, pedal miss application mitigation, adaptive cruise control, manual speed limiter, automatic high beam headlights, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross traffic alert. It also comes with a reverse camera with what Isuzu calls rear 4i parking aid. Other safety features include 7 airbags, anti lock brake system, electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, brake override system, electronic stability control, traction control system, hill start assist, hill descent control, 7 ELR seat belts, child seat tethers, side door impact beams, engine immobilizer, child proof rear door locks, rear defogger. Mitsubishi fitted the Montero Sport GT four-wheel drive with active stability control, hill start assist, trailer stability assist, anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, hill descent control, blind spot warning with lane change assist, ultrasonic miss acceleration mitigation system, and rear cross traffic alert. It also features Mitsubishi's multi-around monitor with cameras mounted on the front, rear, and sides of the vehicle. Other safety features include seven SRS airbags, three-point seat belts for all seven occupants in vehicle, Isofix and Peter Anchors. Another factor to choose is what the buyer really wants to use his new 4x44. Is it for a reliable and nearly go anywhere family vehicle or a personal vehicle for daily use and adventures? It should be interesting to look more closely at the configuration of specs offered by both the MUX and the Montero. Fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has anti-oxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Toyota Motor Philippines recently launched a new model that will surely excite car buyers who are looking for a 7-seater option. Here are the highlights of the event.
We're here now at the BGC Amphitheater for the launch of the all-new Toyota Velos. This is a subcompact uh, SUV that we are introducing to the market. SUV market is actually growing and it is just timely that we are able to have this product to be introduced here in the Philippines. Safety is also one of the highlight of this car as uh, it carries a TSS or the Toyota Safety Sense, which is very important, I think, especially when you're with your family, you'll have peace of mind when driving the vehicle. Customers who need an additional vehicle or plans to replace their current vehicle. Uh, they are married uh, couples and uh, they look for adventure and they want all the luxurious amenities in a subcompact SUV and the price is very affordable. Every time Toyota introduces a new vehicle, it caters to a specific target market. So it's not meant to cannibalize our own models that we have already in the market, but it's more of expanding market, especially in the SUV. As mentioned, SUV market is growing over the past years. I think it's more of the preference of the market. Introducing this vehicle will cater to this kind of market. So we have a Toyota for anyone and everyone. I'd like to invite uh, everyone, all the viewers, to uh, visit any of our Toyota dealers nationwide and check out the new Toyota Velos. Thank you very much. Toyota continues to be aggressive as they launch another model to their product lineup early in the year. What's next for Toyota? Only time will tell. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car view this week. This edition of Car Review takes a look at the 2022 Toyota Vios GRS, the top of the line variant of Toyota's best selling subcompact sedan. After it was first rolled out, the Toyota Vios earned a reputation as a practical, affordable, and reliable subcompact sedan. A suitable entry-level Toyota with all the accompanying attributes attached to the country's number one car brand. Later on, the Vios added sporty to its rep, earned on the track through the Vios Cup. Lately, Toyota seeks to reinforce that sporty rep with a 2022 Toyota Vios GRS. that it does with the Gazoo Racing-inspired aero kit and add-on that adds a few millimeters to the Vios. 
making the GRS variant 4467mm long, 1730mm wide and 1475mm tall. The Vios GRS exudes a sporty vibe with front bumper skirt, side skirt and rear bumper skirt, as well as the rear spoiler and especially the piano black mesh type grille. It shares the 3-tier LED headlamp found in the Vios 1.5G variant as well as the rear LED combination lamps with line guide, LED front fog lamps, fin type antenna and the 16-inch alloy wheels with the 195-50R16 tires. The Vios GRS can also be distinguished by the piano black outer mirrors with the integrated side turn lamps and the outside grip type door handle. The piano black exterior accents certainly look quite sporty in the Vios GRS in the super red V color. The GRS also comes in white pearl crystal shine and black wood. In here, the VS GRS also got the sporty treatment using suede and synthetic leather with stitching for the seats and real leather. Again with stitching for the steering wheel and the shift lever and knob. The Optitron meter gauge on the instrument panel with the 4.2 TFT multi-information display also looks quite sporty. Toyota made sure the Vios GRS doesn't lack for the comfort and convenience features also found in the competition. It's got wireless door locks with smart entry system as well as a push button start. It's got speed sensing power door locks, power windows, and power retractable outer windows, as well as automatic air conditioning. The infotainment system should not disappoint even though it only has a 6.75 inch display, but it does have AM FM radio, auxiliary and USB ports, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto, SDL, voice command, and 6 speakers. As found by Vios Cup racers, Toyota subcompact sedan can be quite a performer on the track as well as on city streets, highways, and twisty mountain roads. The 2022 Vios 1.5 GRS is powered by the 2NRFE 1496cc inline 4 DOHC gasoline engine, a dual VVTI at 16 valves that generates 107 PS and maxes out at 140 Nm of torque. The engine is mated to a 10 continuously variable transmission with sequential control that sends power and torque to the front wheels. On the GRS, the driver can select two drive modes, Eco to save on fuel and Sport for more spirited driving. Paddle shifters give the driver greater control over gear shifts, quite handy in situations like steep inclines and drops. The steering wheel column tilts to aid in finding comfortable and optimum driving positions. The steering wheel also comes with controls for audio. The VIA suspension system features the standard front McPherson strut and rear torsion beam combo. The VS GRS uses brake discs on all four wheels, ventilated in front and solid in the rear. Toyota also, also equipped the Vios 1.5 GRS with driver assist and safety features enough to stay with the competition. These include anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, hill start assist and vehicle stability control. Also added to the GRS are SRS airbags for driver and front seat passenger, side airbags as well as curtain shield and knee airbags. It also comes standard with child lock, isofix and teether anchors as well as 3-point seat bus for 5. Toyota VS GRS got Gazoo Racing Thrill to the perfectly practical, reliable, safe, and comfortable subcompact sedan. It is now difficult to stand out in the all too crowded local subcompact sedan market, but Toyota has done enough with the Vios 1.5 GRS to remain among the top choices in the segment for buyers. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hi, this is Sydney and today we're going to talk about the dreaded check engine light. What it is, what it means and why you should not freak out. So you're driving normally, minding your own business, and then suddenly, BAM! The yellow light of death comes out, the dreaded check engine light. You start freaking out, don't know what to do. You start the car, you stop the car, you turn it on, and it's still there. Oh no, it's the end of the world, something's wrong with my car, my engine is busted. Relax, it's none of those things. Quite simply put, a check engine light 
It simply means that one of the various sensors in the engine senses that something is wrong or is reading wrong. Almost all the sensors in the car measure voltage, is in electricity. It reads anywhere from 0 to 5 volts, and if that sensor is calibrated to read, say, only from 1.5 to 4 volts, then for some unknown reason, it becomes 4.1 volts, then the check engine light will come out. That's all it means. One of the sensors reads something wrong. Now, whether it reads something wrong because of a glitch or temporary condition, or because the sensor is failing, that you will have to find out. And no, you cannot find it out by going on Facebook. You cannot find out going on the internet asking, may check engine ako, ano yung problema? You ask 10 different people, you will get 100 different answers. And none of them will be correct. Especially the people say, oh, nagkaroon na ako niyan. Ito yung problema niyan. No, they are wrong. Do not believe them. Because there are 999 possibilities why that light comes out. The only way for you to find out what that means is if you either, one, have a scanner like this, or you bring it to the casa or the dealership and you have a bigger scanner like this. So now we'll show you what happens when you actually do bring your car in for scanning. First, we'll take the regular shop grade scanner that we have here. This reads pretty fast. All scanners will actually have this port. It's a trapezoidal port. It's called an OBD port or onboard diagnostic port. Every car has this port and it's always, always located somewhere here. It's standard that all car manufacturers agree to. So this will work for any car. This will tell you what the check engine means. There's always an error code that starts with the letter P followed by three numbers. You can actually type that into Google and then it will pretty much tell you what it means. So for this Honda City, we actually have a check engine and we're gonna plug this in right now. So we have it plugged in. It's actually here on the corner. You turn the engine on. On, not start. And we wait for it to fire up because it was now gonna talk to the engine ECU and pull out the error code and see what it means. This is what we mean by the error code. It starts with the letter P followed by three numbers. On our particular scanner, it actually tells you what component is the problem. So this one here is mass or volume airflow circuit low. It might be an intermittent lean condition, it might be an intermittent voltage condition, or it might be that your mass airflow sensor is over 10 years old and it's dead and it's dying. At least it narrows it down to any of the 999 possibilities because it could either be mass airflow sensor, misfire, crank sensor, ABS, oxygen sensor 1, oxygen sensor 2, fuel tank evaporator sensor. The list goes on and on and on. So without this, you won't be able to say for certainty what is wrong with the engine or actually what sensor and what component is wrong with the engine without this. The first thing that shops will do is, oh, that's it? Okay, we just hit the race. So we perform the scan test again. As you can see, the message says no powertrain trouble codes. There's no more, nine out of 10 times. This will work and check engine is gone. So we unplug the scanner and then that's it. You can go on your merry way. But the bigger question is, will that check engine light return? Possibly yes. Like I said, it's caused by one of the sensors not reading correctly. So why it didn't read correctly, we can only speculate. But the two most common reasons are, one, external factors. It just, something just goes wrong. Electronics do that sometimes. Or it might be a symptom of that that particular sensor is on its way to being dead. So it reads wrong now, it reads fine. In the future, it might read wrong again. If it gets too severe, and if you do the erase procedure and it does not erase, that means that the sensor is busted and it's time for replacement. Now, what causes check engine lights? Oftentimes, you'll read on the internet and the groups, masama lang ismo. Uh, no, that doesn't work. Masama yung gasolina mo. Possibly, yes. Because there is such an engine code called cylinder misfire detected that was caused by bad batch of gas whether your 98 octane is not really 98 or me two weeks of gasolina you don't know can it be caused by faulty spark plugs yes it can also can it be caused by me not using the car for three years possible because that particular sensor could be busted and rusted particularly let's say crank shaft position sensors these things have a magnet inside them and the engine gets hot, it gets cold, gets hot, gets cold. The magnet eventually becomes less magnetic. That will also cause a check engine. So like I said, you cannot find out for certain without one of these things. Now, actually, if you go to Lazada, 
you just type OBD scanner, you will find a lot for 400 bucks, 700 bucks, 900 bucks. You can actually just buy one of those and it will work on your car. Just for you to be able to narrow it down. And if you do bring your car to the shop, make sure that once you scan it, you take a picture of this, show it to the shop, so they won't be punching in the dark and asking a lot of questions and basically guessing why. That will be a big help. And if the check engine light doesn't go away, and then if there's something wrong, you only need one of these things. Professional level vehicle diagnostic scanner. This you cannot buy in Lazada anymore. <laughs>there you have it why you should not freak out if your car suddenly has a check engine light it's not the end of the world so hopefully now you understand a little bit more better on why it happens and how to get rid of it that's our feature in autopedia this week taking care of your ride has been made easier and that's autofocus this week we hope you have found this edition of your Electronic Automobile Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.